Let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about insulation versus thermal mass. If you have a greenhouse in a cold climate, you're going to need one or the other or both, or you're just going to waste heat and heat is money. Obviously, money is better in your pocket than wasted. So today, we're going to talk about insulation versus thermal mass, but which is better? There's two building options one can use to contain heat. Insulation, duh. Everybody's heard of insulation. Styrofoam, bad insulation, air bubbles, air creep, that kind of stuff. But then as you investigate, you start hearing about things like earth ships and Chinese greenhouses. And this thermal mass term starts coming up. Thermal mass. What the heck is that? You look at diagrams of thermal mass buildings and there's often no or little insulation on the north wall. It's just thick dirt, stone, concrete wall or water. How does that work? And some places that have thermal mass walls often don't even have heating systems. Just lots of south windows that allow sunlight to shine on the inside of the north wall. Okay, in this video, we're going to explore insulation versus thermal mass. Simple tech. That's the name of this channel. And if you want YouTube to suggest more content like this, hit like and subscribe. And then YouTube's going to actually show you more videos like this. Unless you want to see more Pee Wee Herman type content, it's your choice. Hit like and subscribe and get more content like this. Or let a computer decide what you want to watch and what you're going to watch. Definitions. That's the best way to start. So let's start by knowing what we're talking about. Or at least pretend to know. <laughs> the dictionary defines insulation as something that insulates. Yep. The dictionary definition of insulation actually is that insulation is insulation. Okay. That means we define insulate. And now we have a proper definition. Insulate means protect something by using a material that prevents the loss of heat or intrusion of sound. That gives us a working understanding of the term insulation. In layman's terms for this video, insulation is a material that stops the transfer or movement of heat. Thermal mass is defined as, refers to materials that have the capacity to store thermal energy for extended periods. Thermal mass can be used effectively to absorb daytime heat games, reducing cooling load and release the heat during the night, reducing heat load. Thermal mass absorbs heat and then releases it slowly, kind of like a heat battery. Now, I use the term battery here, but strictly defined, a battery is for electrical energy. And we're talking about thermal energy, not electrical. But using the term battery, understanding it's a heat battery and not an electrical battery, describes the properties of a thermal mass quite well. Now that we know the difference between thermal mass and insulation, some questions arise. Can you use both together? Absolutely! Should you use both together? Yes. Can you use them separately? Yes as well. Insulation is pretty simple. And any material that stops or slows the transfer of heat, keeping heat on one side and cold on the other. This is why thicker insulation is better to keep you warm than thinner insulation. The thicker your insulation, the less heat that can escape. The more insulation you have, the warmer you're going to be for longer. And the less heat you need to keep your greenhouse warm. Since generating heat is usually expensive, more insulation is usually better to save heat and save money. Yes, some insulations are better than others, but the thicker of whatever type of insulation you're using generally means more insulation to what you're, you're, you are insulating. Insulation stops heat movement through material. Thermal mass stores heat for later use. Insulation is what's on the walls of your house and the lining of your winter jacket. It's pretty simple. So in researching thermal mass, another term is going to come up and it's often presented as integrated with thermal mass. That's passive heating. Let me be clear here. Passive heating is not required when using a thermal mass apparatus. Passive heating requires thermal mass. A thermal mass does not require passive heating. 
Passive heating is the harebrained idea of some greenies that they got somewhere from smoking too much Mary Jane in one day that a greenhouse can create and store all the heat it needs within its walls. That the sun will provide enough heat to keep the greenhouse warm at night just from the heat that comes in through the transparent material. Now, if you live in an area in the southern United States or similar latitude in Europe or Asia, yeah, it's possible. But for the rest of us in northern areas and in Canada, screw you and your warm weather, British Columbia, it isn't really possible or feasible. You need to add heat to a greenhouse to make it through a cold winter. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to add expensive heat. There's many affordable options available for winter greenhouse heating, but that's additional heat to what comes in from the sun through transparent material, i.e. the glass. So a thermal mass is basically a heat battery. A thermal mass wall is a wall that's a heat storage unit. Usually in a greenhouse, a thermal mass wall gets its heat from the sun, but that's not the only way to heat up a thermal mass. The sun's rays are an inexpensive way to capture heat and use it at night. It's best to use a thermal mass wall in a greenhouse with great insulation as well, including a thermal blanket used at night to keep more heat in. But there is a problem. What happens on cloudy days when your greenhouse doesn't heat up much? This is why a secondary heating unit is necessary with a thermal mass wall if you want to keep your plants above freezing temperatures all the time. The most common secondary heating units used are a fireplace stove, electric heaters, geothermal, and propane. Yes, there are others. This is just a few options. There are a few different materials you can choose from in using a thermal mass. Some are better than others, and some are way more expensive than others. <clears throat> some materials employ an additional component for heat storage called a phase change, like wax, but that's explored in another video in my archives. Water, clay, stone, and gravel are the most common cheap thermal mass materials that are used today. Water has more thermal mass than dirt, but the containers are often more expensive to buy or create. Chinese greenhouse designs usually use clay. North American designs often use water barrels. There's pluses and minuses for each, but both work. More expensive materials can be better, but I don't have the budget to explore that, and Simple Tech has always been about available, affordable materials you can get most anywhere. They all work. One thing to note, a thermal mass can hold cold, meaning that it can be used for cooling as well as heating, but most thermal mass applications are used for heating. I hope that helps to explain the differences between insulation and thermal mass materials. Both are important in building a four season greenhouse and not using them will cost you money in the long run. I have piles of other videos on four season greenhouses in my archives, all for free here on YouTube. Have fun checking them out. Till next time, cheers from north of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada.